Yoshi, at last, we have found a, a real artist because oh. most, of, most of the artists are not here. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me about your work. Uh, my work is uh, abstract, yet uh -huh. uh, I kind of try to get the element of nature and then bring out the element itself in the abstract form. And the materials that you like to work with? I like the uh, metal, you know, any kind of a stainless steel or regular steel, and then also aluminum. And I like to combine those metal with the uh, organic or mineral, like rocks or wood. Typically, this is only uh, steel, but then this piece has the uh, maple, which I color and dye with the uh, fabric dye. Mm -hmm. So I like a combination of warm and cold, contemporary with the organic kind of balance. Tell me about the piece behind you on the wall here. This one? No, nope, the oh, one all one? the way back here. Yeah. This one is the, uh, the, uh, the kind of a, oh, it's a title, it's an oceanic form. Uh -huh. So I like, I wanted to get the uh, kind of a kind of element of ocean. It's not exactly, you know, anything from ocean, but then just the feeling of it and the right. flowness of it. Right. And, yeah. What, what inspires you? What makes you, um, what, what gives, puts thoughts in your head that you want to express? You know, when you go in the nature, somehow you get the uh, kind of feeling of balance and then sereneness or quietness, quietness. So I wanted to get the feeling, you know, I always think about that when you go to the beach, you feel peaceful, but then I think about why it gives you the kind of sense yeah, of peace. Right. So I just try to get, uh, you know, the, what it is of the core of this sense of peacefulness and then bring out in the, the art, art form so that we can bring into our, you know, room or... The two, p the two pieces behind you, or are they your work? Mm -hmm. Oh, these? Yeah. These are, are no, actually, this is uh, another. Different, yeah, different yeah, artist? Yeah, Mian's. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, yet, this and is another artist. Okay. Yeah, so we share the uh, three, three artists sure. share this yeah. space. When did you get started as an artist? How, how, how did you get started? Um, about 15 years ago, I started making lamps. But when you try to, before you make the lamp or put the shade, you have to make the structure. So I really was struck by the beauty of the structure itself. Right. So instead of covering that structure, I thought, oh, I can make the uh, you know, actual non-functional art itself. And then also I was making the uh, wood as a base of the lamp. And then again, I was struck by the uh, beautiful contrast between metal and wood. And then that's where my inspiration came from. Yeah. Uh, where, where, are you, where do you work out of? I uh, work out in the seaside of Oregon, which is close to Portland, Oregon. And what brought you all the way to West Palm? Uh, let's see, West Palm, I heard that it's a really uh, interesting art scene. I just wanted to see how my artwork will be re received in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so far, the reaction that people have had to your work here? Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah people are really interested in the art itself, so I'm yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and people like to see things that are different, and yours, mm -hmm. yours um, are very much so. And I particularly like the, um, the, the circular movement oh, that's mm -hmm. involved um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the piece up above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was uh, inspired by a, kind of a flight pattern of the swallows and the birds, oh, yes? as well as the uh, kind cool. of plant growth. Yeah. So that's why I called vine and, you know, flight. Oh, neato. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you very much. I right. appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Victims of mesothelioma and their loved ones may be entitled to receive a cash reward from over $18 billion in asbestos trust funds now available. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma, call the number on your screen now. Even if a loved one has passed due to mesothelioma, you may still be entitled to a cash reward. Time is limited. Call now. Please call 800-970-0240. We have found another artist to talk to, who is Joseph Ivacek, and you're from where? I'm from Chicago. What did you bring here? Um, I brought glass to the show. Oh, the security camera is really cool. Is that yours? Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
is there a real you, you should put a real camera in there <laughs> me personally that's what i would do because people think it's not but it is or maybe it really is absolutely no i'm i'm yeah. i'm for that tell me tell me about um this piece um that's that's closest to us uh, the green-faced monster here what's this all about uh that's a it's a piece inspired by andy warhol okay. and so all the imagery is actually warhol's imagery that i've included into it um it's it's glass that's been enameled. Uh, the pigeon is hand blown. And uh, the, the work is about urban decay and influence. Oh, and you've got stuff on the ground here too. Yep. Is that glass? It's all glass, yeah, the spray cans are glass. What sort of art were you interested before you discovered glass? Uh, I was an education major, so I had to take a number of different types of electives. Glass was the most interesting of them. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? I've been working in glass almost 18 years. Have you, in those 18 years, have you perfected some techniques that are individual to you? That's tough. I mean, with a material that's 2,000 years old, I can't say that I've perfected something that's individual to me. Have you perfected a style that's individual to you? Perfected is an interesting word. Um, there's a consistent style that I strive for. Or, okay. Okay. So, we does, continue to grow. Does that style evolve? Absolutely, absolutely. In in, tell tell me a little bit about the pieces that that that, that look. I, I I don't even know how to describe them. I, uh, they're cross members of I beams. So as if you were looking at an I beam straight on. Okay. And so. Uh, they're small vignettes that are intended to be collected in groupings. Are people intrigued by your work? There's been a lot of traffic and interest. Yeah. Are these um, glass spray cans functional? No. No. Are they 100% glass, or is there something else involved with it? They're 100% glass. Can you pick? Can you pick one up? Sure. I, I don't want to hold it because I, I mean, if I dropped it, it would break. Uh, I mean, it's not. Am it's I allowed to touch it? Sure. Here you go. You got it. It's got a nice tactile feel, right? Yeah, and it's a weird thing about art. I want, I always want to touch it. It, it doesn't matter what, what the, you know, what the format of it is. I, I like to touch art. It's a tendency with beautiful things, right? So, so how do you, how do you make something like this? Uh, the object is hot sculpted using Venetian techniques, same way a goblet's made. Okay. They don't come out the same. No, they don't. And and this is another I beam here. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And do you do? Is this your first pigeon, or have you done many glass pigeons? No, I've done probably thirty. See, pigeons. I want to touch the pigeon. I'm I'm sorry. I I mean I want to feel the feathers of the pigeon. That's what I want to do. I'm not going to do it. It's, you're frowning at. You don't want me to no, do that I'm, either. And I don't blame you. Again, as long as you let me hold your credit card, you can touch anything you want. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Is this it? Is this everything you have on display? Yeah, this is my work. So, this is it. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm finding it. I mean, I think it's really cool. Thank you. And I would, if I was wandering around um, this huge convention hall, I would think I would come back here and I would take home a can of spray paint with me. There we go. Yeah. So. Okay. For more than 30 years, Bay Street Pharmacy has been your neighborhood pharmacy and one-stop healthcare center, offering prompt personal service, home delivery, and a dedicated staff that treats our customers like family with care and compassion. Bay Street Pharmacy, where caring people care for you. Plant your business in the Buzz TV ID Garden and watch your buzziness grow. Make a 15 second business video ID. Plant your video ID in Buzz TV programs. Then spread your video ID on social media and watch your buzziness grow on Buzz TV. 
Listen up, America. This is an important medical alert for anyone suffering from back or knee pain. If you or a loved one suffers from back or knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, you can qualify for a pain-relieving back or knee brace at little or no cost to you. Stop living in pain because the brace you need is too costly. Call Listen Up America right now for more details. The call is free and there's no obligation. Please call 800-299-6799. We're with Counterpoint Contemporary Fine Art, which is a gallery in Bridgehampton, New York, in the Hamptons. Um, and here, this is their first time at this particular show at Art Palm Beach, um, and we have a pretty a variety of different artists. Um, here we have behind me is a Manuel Mendive tapestry, um, and he's a Cuban artist. Um, it's all hand-sewn cotton with seashells, and it's very much... You get uh, He's inspired by the Yoruba gods of the Santeria religion, um, so in Cuba, that was um, the background of a lot of um, a lot of Cubans that was sort of disappearing uh, during the revolution. Um, so he was bringing that back as a, a statement against the revolution and trying to hold on to his background and the background of other Cuban people of uh, African descent. So here we have uh, Miles Davis, who's the uh, famous musician, um, which is this one right here, and uh, he was a, a painter in his later life. I'm confused because of the name above it. So Marcarelli is this painting, right? Is is okay. this right here? Okay. Um, and Miles Davis, um, he, we added him later in the collection. Okay. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so here he's very much um, like his music. He was very much a, an impulsive uh, artist. Like he was an impulsive musician. So you see a lot of his improvisation in the paints he used in his uh, in his composition. Does the, does the story of the artist help to sell the art? I think it's important to know the context of the art and when it was made. A lot of the times people don't understand why something is groundbreaking because they don't know when it was made and what else was being made at the time. Um, so I do think it's important not only to sell but also for people to appreciate the work as right. it should be appreciated. Right. Unfortunately there's so many amazing artists who don't have the fame or never right. were able to accomplish that fame and it, we still should be appreciating them so it's important to highlight some of those lesser known artists. Do you think there are artists who, um, who, had, uh, who became well known for something else in their lifetime um, whose artwork is over appreciated because of their name? Yes, I mean, uh, I think you see a satur- you know, oversaturation of Andy Warhol's and Roy Lichtenstein's nowadays, and we obviously know the great impact he had um, in his lifetime and post, uh, but I think there's a lot of other artists who should be coming through that we should also be appreciating instead. Yeah, but, but he was an artist. I'm, I'm thinking more, you know, you mentioned Miles Davis, and I happen to, I mean, I think it's, a, I like the painting very much, mm-hmm. um, and so I'm not using him as, a, as an example of someone who might be overrated, but let's say Donald Trump tomorrow decided to, to go into watercolors. Would, would right. his work be overrated just because of the name? Well, I am trying to imagine a Donald Trump watercolor, and I, I have a feeling that it would be... Oils? <laughs> oils would probably be a little more appropriate. Yeah, okay. um, but that's a good question. I think that um, the art should be, it should be appreciated for what it is and not for the name behind it. Um, if it happens to be a famous name and a terrible, terrible piece of art, we shouldn't convince ourselves that it's good right. just because the name is big. Okay. We have important health news that may be of dire importance to you, your family, or someone you know. If you or your loved ones need health insurance immediately, call Quote Rhino Health now. Let us help you find the health insurance program that provides you access to doctors, hospitals, and emergency services. As an added bonus for calling now, our providers can send you a no obligation, no cost prescription card, which can save you up to 50% off your prescriptions. Call the number on your screen now. Buzz TV Network is now the fastest growing new media outlet in Florida. Watch BuzzTVNetwork.com. Tell me, tell me about this. And, and there's a, several here by the same yes. artist. Yes. Uh, so this is Giancarlo Impilia, and he is was born in Rome. 
uh, but he's lived in uh, America for since 1971. Uh, so he's very much an American artist as much as an Italian artist. Um, and what's beautiful about this, I mean, he's he's well known for reinventing uh, the aesthetics of the Art Deco period. Um, here you have um, a silk fabric where the, the, the patterns from the silk fabric are bleeding through the paints. So rather than using a plain canvas, he paints on this fabric to give both texture and a different dynamic, highlighting commentary where modern culture almost people become defined. Yeah, I'm just, I just want to look a little closer. Sure. I'm allowed to do that? Yes, of course. Um, where people almost become defined by the clothes they wear, their colors, so their it, textures. It is, it is f fabric. Yes, so it's, it's a silk fabric that it's, it's wow. painted on, where the figures blend, blend into that background. Now, um, now, now, this series here all seem to be um, masquerade or cocktail party mm -hmm. type environments. Yes. Is that a theme of his? Uh, yes, and that's something he's been known for um, for since uh, about the 80s, um, and that also sort of highlights almost a satirical nature of his work. We'll go ahead and walk down to mm -hmm. the next one. All right. Where you have these elegant parties and everyone's dressed up to the point where people are no longer defined by who they properly are. Everyone's sort of hiding behind their beautiful disguises. Um, and this one also is on fabric? Yes, yeah, so all three of these of this series are on uh, silk fabric. It's a Jacobean pattern silk fabric. We'll walk down to the next one mm -hmm. also. And uh, di uh, different different color palette, can I say that? Yes. Do I sound intelligent if yes, I say different, that? <laughs> very, yes, very cool. different color palette. Um, this is all uh, you know, according to how uh, he was feeling at the moment and how um, he wanted to present. So for example, one is a garden party, uh, one or more interior parties. Um, this is the garden party, so the, the, the flowers are sort of at the, uh, at the centerpiece. Yeah, but on the, beyond the flowers, the, wa the wallpaper ha is, is, um, is enveloping the, the, fig the central figures in the painting as well. I mean, I just, I just all of a sudden noticed the wallpaper in the background, and then I noticed that, that what appears to be similar uh, design uh, growing growing right into the painting. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's also enhancing that message where everything blends together of colors and forms come together into a, almost a, a, a beautiful pageantry backdrop. Does this have a title? Uh, this is Garden Party. I, I've been told that the title is very important. Mm. I think the title is important, but I, I, I think it's also important for uh, someone to view the art without looking at the title so they can interpret it in their own way. Okay, let's take a quick look at these other, these other three. Again, uh, these are not on fabric, yes, no? No, so, um, so two of these are, um, are metallic prints mounted with plexi, and then this one in the center is uh, oil on canvas, um, sort of more in the traditional fashion. All right, and tell me about these two figures on the far left over there on that wall. What are they? Uh, here are two uh, Keith Herrings, um, obviously well-known name, um, and these are uh, uh, serigraphs of the original work, um, and they're very beautiful, and they tie into this sort of satirical um, edge that we have to um, all of our work here, this um, social political commentary on this contemporary world. How can people find out more about your gal, about the gallery that you're from, and um, what do you have an online presence at all? Or? Uh, yes, you can visit our website at uh, counterpointcontemporary.com, um, and it'll give you more information. And one of our artists, Giancarlo Impilia, is having a retrospective in New York City. Um, and for more information on that, you can go to the uh, nationalartsclub.org. You travel around the country travel around. We were in uh, Miami last year. Uh, we've been uh, in, so I think Florida a few times, but also been in across America and in Europe as well. How do you get a job like that? Uh, it's it's not easy. Luckily, I'm part of a, an arts family, and ah, uh, okay. I would, but uh, I studied art, and that's, that's part of uh, my background. Are you an artist yourself? Uh, I happen to be a writer. Um, okay. But it's uh, it's a different type of just art couldn't it, cut it as an artist. Huh? I was never. I, I like to appreciate visual arts, but my visual art is, is in the in words. Okay, cool. This is another work by the same artist that we were looking at earlier with the the masquerade ball uh, motifs, and this is one hundred percent 
180 degrees, not 100 percent, but 180 right. degrees on the other side of the world, yes? Yes, so uh, here, this is the, the artist I was saying was is from Rome, and uh, here he was revisiting his classical education and uh, having grown up in Italy. Um, so this is uh, inspired by Guido Reni, who was a famous Baroque painter. Um, but here it's, it's seen in a, in a modern context where camouflage fabric is used. It's actually painted on camouflage fabric. Um, and obviously the, uh, the clothing of Saint Sebastian that you see here is, is a painted with camouflage, so it's enhancing this idea of human suffering uh, from war. This combination of, of antiquity and modern, um, this bringing together of two different worlds is, uh, is fairly, I don't want to say common, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a methodology that a lot of artists like to employ, isn't it? Yes, I mean, I think sometimes what separates a good artist from a great artist, I find, is that a, a great artist is able to uh, draw from history and from the greats of the past in order to create something new and compelling for the modern world. Um, but finding that bridge between past and present, I think, is essential in creating beautiful art. And you put that very well. You should be a writer. <laughs> it's funny. I try. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much Thanks for so talking much. to us. Thank I you. Appreciate it. What's on your website? Video is now essential to your brand, and Buzz TV can help your business website stand out. Buzz TV is a full service video production company creating video to highlight what you do best with service and product news and demos, video for the web, YouTube, Facebook, broadcast TV, and social media sharing. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com today. We look forward to hearing from you. Attention, this is an important message for anyone who had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to their heart or lungs. Did your IVC filter move, break, or cause organ damage? The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, or even death. Call Jacoby and Myers today. You may be entitled to compensation. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Please call 800-378-0160. Eddie, tell me about your gallery. Hi, um, this is YY Gallery. We're based out of Chicago. I'm the gallery director, Edward Young. And this year we're featuring two, two main artists. Um, one is Holly Margon from Rio de Janeiro. He's a photographer. And another one that's a fine artist named Young Young. He does the acrylic paintings. Well, let's, let's take a look at this, these photos first. Um, this photo is from Holly Margon. He is a photograph photographer from Rio de Janeiro. Um, his works are limited edition out of 15. This is, all his photography is from an undisclosed location. So he likes to take the photography and then have the viewers decipher where they're from and what it is. If it's a macro, if it's a giant scale, it's all a mystery that the viewer identifies and solves. In the case of this this particular one, it really is about the f the, the, f the form and and the I don't want to say st the, the the design, the flow. Right. The, I mean there's there's movement yeah, within the texture, that rock. the yes? texture is very important, the monochromatic colors, um, the jagged edges, everything brings a certain feeling to the viewer. I mean for me for me it um, it takes you to another world. Uh, definitely, I definitely see that. A lot of people see it's a lot of people think it's volcanic rock. Uh, other people think it's a type of slate. You know, that's that's the story that the artist builds. It's, you have but to really it, decipher but, but, it. But it represents. I mean, I don't know. It's, I'm sure it speaks to different people different ways. But to me, it it um, it expresses a feeling of of power, of strength. That is very true. That is a very uh, strong motif of the artist. He definitely likes things that are very strong and very solid. You can see that res resemblance in all his works. Because although he took the photograph, that the the enormous amount of energy that it took to create this right, is right. expressed in the photo. It's definitely, that's definitely true. I definitely see that. And that's very, and, and you know, the viewers, they pick up on that too. That's a very right. strong yeah. uh, influence in all his works. Let's, let's skip over to this next one here. Example, yeah, this one too. A lot of people see this as an anchor or some kind of anvil. It's definitely metal or cast iron. Which I, I have to put my glasses on, I think, for this one. Yeah, the, the title of this one is Toro. 
which means um, Taro? bull oh, in, yeah. in, in Portuguese. It's again, it's it's pattern and design, and I mean, yeah, texture. It it could just as easily be be um, be a painting as a photo. Exactly. Yeah. If you see the close up of the textures, a lot of people think this looks like raw hide, which plays along with the bull. Right. And the leather, and it almost looks leather, a leather texture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, that and, and you have other other works by him at your gallery. Yes, yes, we have a lot of. This is our newest uh, artist that we picked up and we collected, and now we're distributing, and showing his works. Tell me about this this painting. This is Yang Yang. He is a Chinese American artist, and he likes to. What he always says is he likes to build a car for everyone, and the viewer is a driver. So they go and pick up the story to see where it is. The title of this piece is the Ark. The Ark. So it's it's like a Noah's Ark theme. Sort yeah, because that's what I thought of. Yeah, of when right, I yeah. At it. if if you're religious, you'll see Noah's Ark. If you're not, then you'll see a different story. It's a lot of Eastern and Western influences coming together. The the big round f figures that's a sign of fortune in Eastern culture. Okay. And then the Ark and this whole story of the, the Noah's Ark is the Western. Yeah, and but that, I mean, there's so much more to it. I mean, there's that, so that, much more. This you can look at this for hours yeah. and just see everything. Um, and because it. Uh, because there, I mean, there's modern modern buildings, or to me, they look right, modern, or Vatican modern. type buildings right, uh, right, up in exactly. the top. And a uh, uh, big red sun. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Sun is another uh, another. Th um, influence and reoccurring theme that he has in all his paintings. Um, what I what I personally like about it is is that it, it does you you can make up any story you want, but yeah, but yeah. there's a, there's um, a lot of different things going on, and so it kind of occupies your mind. Exactly, exactly. It occupies your mind. You have to look at it and really analyze it. It's not just something that comes really easily. You have to really think about it, and it tells you what it is. Behind you, are we back into We're back um, to Holly Margon? Okay. Back to Holly Margon, and all these are very abstract, but they're all untouched. They're not fabricated in any way or digitally retouched. These are all natural photos that the photographer. So I've got. Took. I've got to walk up and get a closer yes, look. Take a closer look. Um, the 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 fun part of it is you don't know if it's a macro of something that's magnified or if it's something big that was constructed. This is all for the viewer to see and think of. Um, now that I'm up close, I'm not sure, but but it, it seemed to have a, a liquid form liquid to ice. it. Ice, yeah, yeah, liquid or ice. Um, and yes. and the one next to you also appears to have some, yeah, some some. These, I mean, water to a certain extent seems right, to play right. a part in it, but there's much more going on. Yeah, this is these are the Terra series, which means Earth in Portuguese. So he spent the last few years traveling all around the world, taking photos of. Specific things where you can't really tell. There's a there's a there's a uh, uh, influence of abstraction let's, in let's it. Let's move down here a little bit, okay? Yeah. Um, and and the uh, I mean I'm assuming those are flowers in the crags of rocks, but right, I don't right. I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, they can, they 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 seem to earth earth influence. So yeah. yeah. And this and this final one here. This one is blue. It's a. Uh, I think it's a pool. But it's up it's to the viewers, it's through a glass, so it gives it the texture, it's untouched. A lot of people think it's acrylic or paint, but it's, it's just a photo. And it gave this texture, if you can see, it's a beautiful texture that the photography turned out to be. And, um, and very um, soothing? Very soothing, very soothing, very soothing. yes. Well, what do you enjoy about different, different, seeing different artists work? I enjoy just the dynamic and the contrast between all the works. Yeah. You know, I love seeing uh, paintings to photography. I love how they're different, but then they have similar influences at the same time. How can people learn more about your gallery? If you want to check out YY Gallery, YY Gallery, you can find many artists, many great artists, many talented artists. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. nice Appreciate talking to you.